ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين السلام عليكم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيد الخلق وأشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اتبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها النبي إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا سبحان الله The why is way more important than the what We will discuss how we do da'wah in whatever media that is available to us and in academia but before why do we do da'wah subhanallah just to show you the significance and the honor for you to be one who invites to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there's this one incident that was so significant that Jibreel alayhi salam came down and told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent the angels of the mountains at your disposal for an entire tribe if you wanted he would bring the two mountains north and southern of Mecca raise them up from the ground and crush that tribe in between that doesn't happen that often and subhanallah it's one of the incidents of the ultimate mercy of Prophet Muhammad that look at his answer and it was justified even by Jibreel alayhi salam وَلَكِنِّي أَرْجُوْ أَنْ يُخْرِجَ اللَّهُ مِنْ أَصْلَابِهِمْ مَنْ يَعْبُدَهُ وَلَا يُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا Prophet Muhammad did not want him to be killed because if you kill him, then they're not going to be any of their lineage. They're not going to be having children or children of their children. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the mercy in the heart of Prophet Muhammad that he wishes that maybe just for the sin that they did, still their children or their grandchildren, one of them might say, La ilaha illallah, and for that he forgave them all. Yet, but how did we come to this point, this unbelievable incident when the angels appeared from the heaven? Prophet Muhammad used to travel, knock on people's doors, humble himself to them, tell them, I am the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here's your creator, here's why he created you, this is the purpose of your life, this is what you need to do, and this is what you need to avoid. And it's a place that was so far away, it's in today a ta'if in Saudi Arabia, if you know. And Prophet Muhammad even after they heard him and you know, insulted him, SubhanAllah, he was so offended and so hurt that he walked a distance almost from here to New York City without even being aware where he was. That's how much they heard Prophet Muhammad Did Prophet Muhammad stop? No. So when Prophet Muhammad Sayyidul Khalqi wa Ashraf al on top of everything that he was doing, receiving the last word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, founding the Muslim state, guiding his people, fighting people, establishing the Muslim state, and still a big duty that he actually would travel on foot outside of the skirts of his own town, knock on every tribe's door, try to invite him to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter what happens. Imagine the benefit, imagine the reward, imagine the responsibility and the benefit that we would get as ourselves and we are so much in need to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but again we need to identify the why on top of the importance of doing da'wah and inviting for the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa that said it the best and, and we need above and beyond even the topic of today to believe in that realize that move based on that understand our deen from that perspective who is he? He is Rab'i ibn Amr radiallahu anh. It's the time when Muslims had to confront the Persians. So he went as a messenger of the Muslims at the time of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anh, to meet their leader Rustum. At the time the Persians were, if you lived in the 80s, were equivalent to like the Soviet Union, the second major power in the world. The first being the Roman Empire. And Rustum was going crazy. What happened to these people? They were just... You know, some tribes that no one cared for, 
in a land that even neither the Romans nor the Persians wanted to occupy, yet they're sweeping every land around them to the limit that they come in at our doorsteps in Persia to challenge us. Why did you come here? That was his question. Rabbi ibn Amr who answered him in three sentences. The gist of the three sentences, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us out to change the world. إِنَّ اللَّهَ بْتَعْثَنَا لِنُخْرِجَ الْعِبَادَ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ الْعِبَادِ إِلَىٰ عِبَادَةِ رَبِّ الْعِبَادِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us out to liberate people from worshiping the Creator, the created, to worshiping the Creator. وَلِنُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ مِنْ جُورِ الْأَدْيَانِ إِلَىٰ عَدْلِ الْإِسْلَامِ And to take people out of the injustice of man-made religions to the justice of Islam. وَلِنُخْرِجَ النَّاسَ مِنْ ضِيقِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَىٰ سَعْتِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And out of the tightness and the harshness and the poverty of man-made theories to the prosperity in this dunya and the ultimate prize of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Jannah. That is the mission. That is what the companions of Prophet Muhammad understood when they went out there. People would tell you they're out there fighting to gain territorial control. They were fighting there to gain spoils. They're fighting there to be in control of more lands and defeat people around them. They were fighting. They were willing to sacrifice their monies and their lives in battles. Wallahi, if you look at the statistics of the battles, most of the battles that the Muslims went through were outnumbered, actually severely outnumbered. All that to give people the freedom and the opportunity to choose their creator without obligating them to. Imagine the level and the zenith of civility that you're willing to sacrifice everything that you have to give people who do not believe in what you believe just for them to have the choice and the freedom to possibly choose correctly for their own benefit. In Badr, Muslims are outnumbered 3 to 1. In Khaybar, they're outnumbered 7 to 1. In the battle of Qadisiyah, the battle that we're talking about with Rabbi Ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, happened in Ramadan, it started in Sha'ban, happened in Ramadan, there were uh, about, uh, about 10,000 Muslim soldiers led by Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqasr versus 100,000 well-equipped Persians in their own homeland. Even if you go further out, this is subhanAllah with all the Muslims when they went to Andalusiyah. They crossed the Mediterranean in ships. There were 12,000, no horses on their foot facing 100,000 of the Qut soldiers in a land that they didn't even have maps for they put their foot there for the first time and it wasn't Ramadan for two weeks and they annihilated them that's how significant and how important it is to do that one. and as significant as it is and as gigantic the sacrifices that the Muslim did I want us to look at our situation right now we don't have to sacrifice our lives to invite people to Islam we don't have to sacrifice our monies or our times mm -hmm. to do da'wah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole world is wide open for us. The largest, most powerful country in the world, America, not only is so wide open for us, but subhanAllah in dire need for Islam and Sharia law and they do not know it. So if it's so significant that the Prophet sallallahu would risk being hurt, the companions lose their lives, in subhanAllah unbelievably, Dangerous battles to them where they're tremendously outnumbered. Still, the moment that we're here right now that I can get the same reward and I don't have literally sacrifice anything. Do I do it? Should I do this? Should I get the reward when Prophet Muhammad said, لَن يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا خَيْرٌ مِنْ حُمْرِ النَّعْمِ For one man to accept his creator and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is better for you than any worldly position that you could possibly think of. Should we do it? Subhanallah. Think about it. A prostitute of the sons of Israel was walking in a hot day. And then she saw a dog, a harsh, hot desert stray dog that was so thirsty it started to eat the mud at the head of a well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with His mercy, put mercy in her heart that she stopped and use her shoe to get some water and let that dog drink. And then she continued. Just that one act of mercy on a dog 
غفر الله لها الله سبحانه وتعالى forgave her imagine when you guide an entire family and lineage because the one person that would accept Islam his children would be Muslims and the children of their children inshallah would be Muslims and every single one of them subhanallah when they bow when they say la ilaha illallah when they fast when they do a righteous deed you will get the same reward one who guides to a good deed gets exactly the same reward you'll get that reward imagine what kind of reward if an entire human being would be saved from hellfire not saved from thirst and we're not talking about a dog imagine the reward yet we have a barrier and the barrier always is shaitan and what is shaitan if you ask me brother Mustafa what is your definition of shaitan I can recite you the verses from the Quran like subhanallah like you want in whichever Quran that you want but if you ask me what is the definition what is shaitan is all about shaitan is nothing but an excuses machine first thing when I make da'wah Oh, da'wah, you have to be a great scholar, you have to memorize the Qur'an with the 10 Qur'at and, you know, all the hadith in Muslim and Bukhari. Other than that, do not embarrass Islam, do not embarrass yourself, do not do da'wah to people. You couldn't be further from the truth. Wallahi, I know a sister in ICJ back in South Brunswick. A brother, who's now a Muslim, was looking for a religion. He was not satisfied with his life. He knows inside him that he was created to worship, to bow to his creator. Tried Christianity, did not work. Tried Buddhism, did not work. Started, you know, uh, Judaism did not work. And then, well, got to be the Muslims. They're one quarter of the population. Subhanallah. In his work, there was a sister that was doing da'wah probably and she did not know that she was doing da'wah. What was her da'wah? She kept her Muslim attire. Did not listen to the shaitan telling her, oh, what are they going to say about you? As if the shaitan, when people dye their hair blue and pierce their noses and skins and put all these kind of crazy tattoos, that is not going to be something that would make you look at, at people. But the hijab would. She wears her hijab. He knows that this is the Muslim look. He went to the sister and said, well, I'm looking for the nearest mosque or a place where I learn about Islam. She just handed him the address. Wallah, he did not speak to him. Brother goes there, three weeks, four weeks, he accepted Islam. Subhanallah, very knowledgeable. Uh, and went to Saudi Arabia, married a Saudi sister. And subhanallah, he is a major debater of, you know, Christians and Jews who, you know, are spreading Islamophobia, you know, rumors and so on and so forth. Just by the attire. Just by your manners. When Prophet Muhammad was telling us about the best human being at all of all Muslims, he did not say he's the one that prays on time all the time, even though it's the tremendous reward for that. Or the one who memorized the Quran verbatim. What is the definition of the best human being as per Sayyidul Khal Quraysh al Mursaleen? Hadith Abu Huraira, Hadith al Hassan, Khayrun Nasi. The best of all people are the most beneficial to all people. With your manners. Just having the Islamic manners without having the fundamental authentication of the hadith and sunnah and Quran behind him. Just wearing your Muslim attire, showing you people the quality of Islamic manners. The courtesy, the kindness, the trustworthiness of Islamic manners. That is subhanAllah is the most formidable way for people to accept Islam. Look at today. What is the largest Muslim, independently Muslim country by population in the world? Anyone knows? Indonesia. Indonesia. Quarter billion Muslims. Can anyone name the battle by which the Muslims opened Indonesia to Islam? You won't be able to because there were no battle by which Indonesia would open to Islam. So is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us something? The largest quarter billion Muslim country in the world and not one single sword was open for them to be Muslims. How? Four Muslim merchants who learned their deen, the deen of manners. Prophet Muhammad said, Innama bu'ithtu, hadithi Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, marfu'a, Innama bu'ithtu lu'utammima makarim al-akhlaq. I was only sent but to complete the most noble of manners. Talking to his companions, the closest of you to me, on Judgment Day, أَحَاسِنَكُمْ أَخْلَاقَ You're best-mannered. So they went with their deen, the deen of manners. Not the deen of the banners, but the deen of the manners. 
And then people were shocked before they quoted them a price, before they even told them what kind of merchandise versus the other kind of merchandise. They started to tell them what is wrong with their merchandise. Beware, there's something wrong with the leg of that horse. There's a hole in that piece of textile and so on and so forth. People were shocked. After they're done with business, people gather around them. We never seen any people like that. Your cleanliness, your brutal honesty, your demeanor, your calmness. What is this? I want to be like that. They told him this is Islam. And when they taught him Islam, they didn't teach him the Islam of the slogans, but Islam of the behavior and the manners and the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In practically dealing with everyone around us. So people accepted it. And when they taught other people, they taught him the same thing. Now quarter billion human beings accepted Islam. You know what the significance of that? So we realize the why of the reward of us doing da'wah. Every Muslim of the quarter billion who accepts La ilaha illallah, who gives charity, who bows to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who helps anyone based on that Islamic knowledge, these four merchants will get a piece of it. That's the justice and the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Sahih al-Bukhari, ad-dallu ala al-khayri kafa'ilu. So, now, I'm in college. I am online. How would I do da'wah? The easiest way possible to gain that reward, wallahi, with nothing. Wear your Muslim attire in college. Show people your manners. Do not be rude. Be nice and polite. Do not be timid at the same time. When you ask a question, if you know the answer, answer nicely and politely. If you do not know, ask him politely. Can I get back to you with an answer? And ask a scholar and get back to them. Point them to a good book. Hand them a good book that you know about Islam, about the topic that they're asking about. Invite someone who knows to speak to them. Nicely and politely. Online. All the surveys around us, why people think that Israel is right and uh, you know, uh, Muslims are wrong and, and subhanAllah Islamophobia because the percentage of the truth about Islam versus the nonsense of Islamophobia around, subhanAllah is, is tremendous. So in the survey, what do you think of that? Fill in the survey and click it. When you see someone claiming something wrong about Islam, Research it. Ask someone who knows. Ask the shaykhs and subhanAllah we have so massages now. And post an answer. When someone is rude to Islam or Muslims, put an answer there. Go to websites. Publish your opinion. Do not be reactive but be subhanAllah one who takes initiatives. Start a Facebook about a topic that you see subhanAllah they bombarded people. Or Israel has the right to defend themselves. Well, here's a statistic for you guys. Numbers do not lie. Here's what happened. Here are pictures. Watch this. When someone posts a negative thing about Islam, take his similar, exactly his title, make a change of it, and make another posting. So the people who are looking for that title would see, when they do the search, your own posting because they're similar in title. There's a million things that you could possibly do. Did anyone die? Did anyone sacrifice his life? Did anyone spend a fortune doing that? Wallahi, we're clicking anyway. Wallahi, we're posting anyway. Wallahi, we're watching YouTube regardless. You might as well do that and gain the reward of, subhanAllah, not having a confirmed person who accepts Islam because of you, but someone who was edged closer to accepting Islam. Sometimes they ask me, you know, come speak in a synagogue or a church and, and things like that. And the time or the occasion sometimes is hated for me to do that. But I go there. To speak about Islam. Not thinking that the priest is going to accept Islam tomorrow or all of them are going to say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah on the spot. But when I tell him the truth in the lenient, positive way of Prophet Muhammad, then they will itch closer. They will be nicer to a Muslim, maybe. Maybe next one who would interact with them socially where they work or where they teach or where they buy or sell, they would have a better understanding and a more lenient, a more positive look at Islam. Then for that little step, I'm willing to take the effort and I'm willing to do the lead. We have tremendous opportunity at the lowest cost possible to get the highest reward poss possible that the best people that ever walked the earth, the companions of Prophet Muhammad were willing to sacrifice everything that they have including their life just to get some of that reward that we have at our fingertips. Alhamdulillah ala namat al-Islam Alhamdulillah ala namat al-Islam Alhamdulillah ala namat al-Islam wa kafa ba na'ma Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Asr inna al-Insana lafi khusr ila al-Ladhina aman wa amilu al-Salihat wa tawasaw bil-Haqqi wa tawasaw bil-Sabri wa akhir da'wana and Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Jazakum Allah khayyam Allah wa akbar
ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين